Welcome everybody to another Sunday morning comic book church. My name is Chris Sarda at Chaos and Comics on Instagram and Twitter and here. And I still don't know what I'm doing on this Sunday morning stream that I plan to do for hopefully just half an hour at a time. I do know I am making one of my friends wait with bated breath to talk about um, fighting on the uh, on the other channel, Chaotic Sports. But even fewer people watch that channel than this channel, so uh, it's uh, re it's right now really just for fun. But he's uh, he's consistent, and I like that. I like having a a consistent partner because I have no trouble talking. I have trouble turning on the computer and actually doing stuff. So. That's exciting. So here for this comic book church thing, it is uh, it is what it is, sort of. I'm just going to talk about stuff aggressively. Uh, preach aggressively. Re relaxing is here. He's one of the cool guys in the uh, community. Um, he also has a cool Star Trek podcast that uh, I try to catch as much as possible. The problem with Star Trek is that there's just spoilers, you know. So, but they talk about everything, so the whole world, the whole like slew of Star Trek they talk about. So we're talking about the video games and everything. Um, but uh, that's definitely something to go look for. Uh, Terrence is here. Thank you for coming, Terrence. You're uh, one of my favorite people in the whole community. Uh, who else is here? Um, but he's, uh, he's, uh, he's being a little bit of a wuss today because he works so hard. He's not doing his big stream this week. So, you know. Uh, Superior Hero Reviews, uh, another one of my favorites. Oh, look, Canada's Canada's being represented by Sam King. And Alois Doddle, catching this live for the first time. I was going to say, you were new to me. Thank you for coming and checking us out. And Coffee Breath, I haven't seen Coffee Breath for a little bit, so I'm glad you came by, that's for sure. Um, anyway, like I said, there's never a real plan. I'll show some. I'll show some of the books I bought and some of the books I picked up. Um, and then I'll blabber, I'll blabber on about, um, you know, whatever I feel like essentially about the channel and whatnot. So I already put out, um, two videos this week. One of them, uh, one of them was this week in X-Men, which I'll try to, uh, keep, you know, stay up with. And I think it's easier for me to just call it this week in X-Men because, you know, if you're interested in it, you're interested in it, and then we could talk about it. And if you're not, that's cool too. And I don't have to like slow down other stuff with it because that, you know, that story now is a, a very mature story. And if you're not into it now, you know, it's going to end before you can like catch up to us kind of thing. So I do want to do that. And, um, you know, X Men has a pretty vibrant community actually, like on Twitter and stuff. Like people, we all, we all think of X Men as not being touched but it was definitely it definitely had its fans it definitely had a reason to have comic books being published it just didn't have that oomph that it had in you know from claremont through the 90s um up through grant morrison you know it had that even though great writers were on it had that empty period so um, i'm separating that and then um also in the spirit of me just uh doing stuff that's not good for my channel um i decided to review uh issue number twos of two books that are uh, you know, don't seem that popular. One is Carmen, issue number two, and then uh, Eros Psyche, which I'll show some of those in a minute here because the covers are relevant to show. So that came out. And then I recorded another video and I can't remember what it is. So I don't know. It wasn't Dark Hawk because I haven't finished it, but it was another number one. So I haven't released that yet. Um, and then I, I think that I will I try to get ahead in a bunch of manga reviews and just time those to come out on Monday because of alliteration and whatnot. So, and then whatever I feel like reviewing, you know, on Tuesday or Wednesday morning when I get up or Thursday morning and I read a comic in my car before I go to work. And then you, you see me with the wheel around, um, and, and just reviewing a comic. And I'm, I'm literally going to get out of my car or drive down the street from the Starbucks and then start working. So that's the, uh, the genesis of those. Um, let's see, I knew you are watching the priority one podcast, the official Roddenberry. I, I thought that's the one you were on, right? You're there's a couple podcasts I just throw on for star Trek, but I have to be careful because I'm so behind on, uh, that's the one you're on, right? Aggressively. I, there's a couple I listen to, but I, I have to like, I have to turn them off sometimes when they start talking about like discovery, you know, cause I, I watch those. I still haven't finished um, Star Trek Discovery season three. Me and my wife watch it 
but I don't like to watch TV at night. I like to watch in the middle of the day if I'm going to watch it. So still alive right here. Look, Captain Comics, his, uh, his, uh, I don't know if anyone who's, I'm going to call them your wife. I don't know if anyone's married or not married. Sometimes I call people their wife and they correct me and it's their girlfriend. But uh, I saw um, I saw Tori, Captain Comics' wife, on the uh, woman's show last night. So once a month on Robert's comic book G-Talk. Or, I mean, he has a weird name. His name is the comic book G-Spot. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> he seems like a quirky guy, to be honest. But uh, so that works out in, in its own way. And his wife does one night a month, and uh, I can't remember the name of the show, but it alludes to the menstrual cycle, where a bunch of women get on and talk about comic books. So like Matilda, if you see on Gray Man, is on there. Jennifer is on there. Um, Smiley Tori, like I said. So that was pretty cool. I watch as much of it as I can. Um, and Captain Comics' wife was on there. Um, and then Captain Comics is always on random streams. We always just jump on um, Old Wolf stream. So, uh, and I don't think we really talk about comics. So. <clears throat> Gore, yeah, Gore Vidal is great. It was either Gore Vidal or, or Damien probably, you know, so let's see. I can just sit in front of a computer for three. I can't. That's true too. That's true. I, I'm managing it somehow. I got a new job, so I have to like get up and pretend like I know what's, what's happening, but I can tell there's going to be a lot of computer sitting uh, also. Um, oh, I haven't seen Aggressively's new video, so I got to go look at that. The guy won the call for sure. So I uh, was glad to see the video on the number two. Literally that video, it was the video that covered Eros, Psyche, and um, Carmen was just literally for Terrence and Gore Vidal. Like other people comment on it. That was cool. But uh, yeah, wife. Okay, see, good. I, I guess in the Dakotas, you still have to get married. That doesn't doesn't work that way necessarily around here. Um. Oh, there we go. So it is. It is the official Roddenberry pod. I don't know how you get to be the official Roddenberry podcast, but you're uh, you're up there. So anyway, I'm just going to show some things uh, that I got cover wise. So I reviewed this book. This I literally just put this out while my baby was crying at like four in the morning, uh, West Coast time. Um, so talked about this a little bit. Um, I also really like all these covers, and I, I can't say that I rarely cover by. I do like getting cool covers. What I need to be better at is, uh, and obviously it's an homage cover of Pulp Fiction. What I need to be better at is like thinking of a way to present. Um, I've heard Bubs on Bubs Comics. I'm just plugging everyone's channel today. Uh, I also, I see I bought this cover too that's coming in the mail. I bought the Virgin, Virgin variant and the, that I really liked and the one with the trade dress. But, um, you know, Bubs was uh, talking about you know, how like presenting, like how it presents and what he like the reason I'm not unless you're going to put everything in Mylar. Um, but I think he's cutting down his collection a little bit and, and he's, you know, he goes, how does it present? Which I think is a big deal too, especially if you're buying covers. So, I mean, I have empty wall and I just would like to figure out how to like maybe do something where I can, um, where I can like swap out books. Like I want to show all the you know, Ven I have a lot of Venom and Carnage covers, you know what I mean? They just get me. I, at some point I realize I have too goddamn many and they all look the same, but, um, you know, be able to put that up or be able to put like s some older comics that I got up or whatever. Um, there's Carmen. So I already talked about those. Um, there's only one book on this list that I haven't read yet. So Dark Hawk, I mean, this is for the 90s kid in you. I got through about half of it and it was cool. I would like to actually read the dark hawks i own i think there's maybe like had like a 30 40 50 issue run or something so i haven't read this yet and i haven't heard anyone talk about it and scout seems to be like on everyone's lips um and I'm, I, I think it was new so i i did actually buy a paranormal hitman but um yeah this is the only book that i was planning to read you know my new books that i didn't read art's okay inside um but i found that to be the case i should put this to the side so i make sure that i read it and it's just a small stack before I start blabbering. Oh, this is the other one. I This is the other book I reviewed. I just haven't dropped it yet. So, you know, What If is back. I like the idea that they're doing a What If in um, in, a, in a miniseries form. Um, you can avoid, if you guys remember the old What Ifs from the 90s, you know, there's a lot of exposition. The Watcher, Watu, had to, like, explain the way it was and then what's changed. You know, and then you ended up getting like maybe a like 
15, 16 page story or something. Um, <clears throat> so Dar Zdarsky's like sort of what if kind of story, you know, it's barely a what if story. It's not even in the title, by the way. So this is gonna be one of those what ifs for what if completists that you're, you're not gonna be able to find by just typing what if in the, in the um, in your CLZ app or whatever. <clears throat> but he's gonna do a four issue story. Um, you know, you, I'm not gonna get into it. You could check out the review. I didn't love this first issue, um, but I still liked it. Uh, this is me being a, a fool. I tried to grab all the behemoth books and I didn't grab this one. I thought it was a number one, um, but that's like legitimately the biggest number three on any of my books and I still somehow missed it. So I don't know. I don't know what's up with me. Those are X-Men books. You only care if you care. Um, I think when I'm talking or doing videos like specific books uh, for something like Thor here, you know, I'll, I'll review or talk about the number ones because I, you know, I think that, I mean, I'm really here to like talk to you guys in the chat or in the comments and stuff. Right. So it's not because I don't love like talking about every single book, you know, issue number 14 of something, but, um, you know, there's, it's just less conversation kind of thing. But I think what I will do is for something like this or even Indies, maybe I'll, I'll wait till arcs are over. So talk about issue number ones and then talk about the full arcs. You know, the problem is I'm super disorganized. So I have no idea where that whole Thor prey, um, storyline is it's like on the floor. It could be in the stack here. You guys that care about the way you take care of your comics would really not be happy with me. Um, so, uh, and then we go to home. Now I think, uh, I think everyone I know that actually liked this book, even bearded comic bro, you know, he, he was disappointed in the way I was with it, but, um, he, I think he still sort of liked it, but, uh, I think, um, my review compared to, uh, what the comic burrito guys did. Each one of them had this book number one uh, in their rankings on their Wednesday show. Uh, and, you know, I was a little more lukewarm on it, but um, still happy with it and happy that we're getting stories uh, told about the border and, and the way that uh, the way those people are treated and then the, the sort of the plight that they come from. Um, and then just a couple more on that side. So that's Homesick Pilots. I've really enjoyed this. It's actually more of an action book than it is like a horror book or weirdo indie book. Um, and that's sort of surprising to me. Uh, you know, John Rodgers wrote Coffin Bound, which I loved and other people were iffy on, but it was just, you know, Coffin Bound was really weird and out there. A lot of Ron B's old work, really weird and out there. I'm trying to decide how I'll do um, this i think that the those white noise guys and i might just throw in kieran gillen and Cy Spurrier, which is ba basically british writer guys um you know i might do it like a this week in in those or something like that because i do like to talk i do want to talk about this i do want it rom b is very prolific and he's a really good writer um or at least an interesting writer so i want to talk about what he does um giga is alex Pacnadel, and then they they put out a bunch of indie stuff that hasn't that you know is they're all just catching on. And then Ryan O'Sullivan is the other one, uh, maybe mix in Seisberger and like a Kieran Gillen or something. So then there's always like two or three books to talk about. Um, but I really like homesick pilots. What I really, what I like even more from, uh, I keep calling him John waters, like the director, Dan waters with two T's and waters. What I like even more is a picture of everything else. But um, my, my comic store got shorted that. And it's like, I could have got it at another comic store, but it's in my box. So then I'd be screwing them. So I got to hold off on that. Um, that's like one of the, that's like one of the rare times where I'll just go, fuck it. I'll go pirate it. And, um, cause I've already, I'm already going to pay for it. You know, I, I wanted to read it. It's one of my favorite books. I'm not going to screw my comic store. So then to read it right away, I'll just go to one of those websites. So I did do that and, uh, it wasn't there. It's just not a popular <laughs> book. So, but a picture of anything else is something I really, really like. And then last I'm going to, I'm going to tell you guys a my, my, a minor spoiler about this. And I don't think it's that big a deal. It might even make you want to read this book, to be honest. It may, maybe, may, maybe, it may make you go, Oh, you know what we all say about Tom King that we need the whole 12 issues at once. So this may turn you to do that. Um, but it just shows how little this book is being read because if people knew that Frank Miller, the writer, uh, is wearing the Rorschach mask in this book, uh, I think it would have caused a much bigger stir, especially with, um, you know, with the way Tom, people love to love and hate Tom King. So yes, Frank Miller, Frank Miller, that one, Frank Miller, 
Frank Miller, Rorschach mask. And that's all I'll say about it. I'm still very confused by it. We we all say this every single goddamn week that we cover one of the three Tom King books out that they will read better uh, all together as a max. We all say it. Everyone says it, you know. So I'm going to say it again. All three of them will probably read better if you read them in 12 issues. But I'm reading them issue by issue. I think the only person that doesn't say it is Gore Vidal. Um, and that's because I think he didn't do a lot of drugs as a youth and his memory works fine. Um, so let's see what's up. Oh, Gore Vidal's up there. Gore Vidal's here, it looks like. So uh, we got some ahoys going on. Uh, best thing I bought for my office was a magnetized CGC slab type case that you can hang on a wall. Great to trade out. Book. Oh, see, that's good. Something like that. I need good ideas for displaying on my walls. That magnetized CG CGC case looks good. Um, a shot of mint. I don't even know. I just talked too long, so I can't remember. Oh, what if a mini series? Oh, what if mini series? What I should have said. Yeah. So you can really like develop them. Here's Gore saying good morning. Comic crack and everyone here. Um, thank you, Gore. Yeah, I'm interested. I just told everyone I basically did that so I can talk to you and Terrence about it. Other people jumped on too, so I'm glad. God Tank actually um, is someone that looks for. He's saying he loves paranormal hitmen too, but he he you know he left a comment, so I'll, we'll talk about that too. God Tank is actually a good perspective on this because um, you know he I mean he rereads all his comics obviously, but he's you know, more an art background or, you know, that's where the way he sees things. So, um, and he enjoyed Carmen also. Um, everyone's saying, yo, Gore, I'll be on my best behavior. I see you wielding a wrench. Oh, I don't even know who's a wrench because I'm doing this from, uh, um, I'd be like, I, I would be like Biggie. I just would give everyone wrenches if I was doing this from YouTube. I'd just start doing everything. Saga, saga, saga. <laughs> Oh, Dylan's here. Dude, Dylan, are you still working late night or what? There we go. Um, we got a we got a, a station identification right here from Chamorro. Um, yeah, I don't know. What do you think, Gore? Should I have? I don't even know if I, I... To me, I think that would make people more interested in the book, to be honest. It's a little bit of a spoiler, but... I think that people might go, oh, maybe I'll check out that Rorschach book when it's 12 issues out. So it's sort of strange, right? So um, I'm not a believer, but I'm here for the sermon. <laughs> oh, there we go. Do I look like Justin Bieber? I always thought I was as cute as Justin Bieber. Um, there we go. I hope you're doing good too. I'm not sure if Dylan came out. So look at this. Aggressively still here. Bub did a video on his comic wall. Looked great with those CGC clicks. I think I'm getting some. So are the? I think that's what Terrence uh, Comic Crack just mentioned. So, um, but I don't. I don't really get it. What do you do? You put. You could put your comic. I, I, I'm gonna have to look those up, right? Because obviously I don't have the only slabs I have are um, a Rye number one that I won from two brothers, and then two slabs that I won from Carolina Chris two six, which is. He was the first contest he ever did, and he just went on live for. And it's one of the funniest live streams I ever did, because he didn't know. I mean, I wasn't on it. I won the slabs. Though. I was in the chat. There's maybe like 10, 11 of us, and uh, Chris was just so funny in there. <laughs> he starts talking about his his lazy ass cat and stuff. So um, I did. Those are my slabs essentially. And then I won a profit number three, eight point five. So like a dollar book in a slab because I won it for twelve bucks on eBay. So that was pretty funny too. Um, oh, oh yeah, good. So Gore Vidal also read home, and um, you know, go, and and Gore Vidal, and along with like uh, New X guy Ryan, you know, they live right in Texas, so a lot of that is also their state news, essentially. So it's a uh, like closer. It just isn't na national news like it is to a lot of us, right? So it's their state news. Um, oh man, you've been all around, man. Third and first. Yeah. So yeah, when you're in that mode, I mean, at least you're getting a paycheck. You know, a lot of people are out. But yeah, when you got to jump around shifts or whatnot, what Comic Crack would tell you is to uh go find a good job with a union and make sure you support them because that, you know, jumping around shifts like that. And to be honest, that'll happen in a union job too when you don't have seniority, but um, but at least there's more of a future. 
Uh, let's see here. Chamorro was great having you last night, man. Oh yeah, they uh, did. Chucky would have been great. I love. I Chucky used to be my favorite horror, um, uh, horror show, uh, horror movies when I was a kid because they felt like they felt like they felt like they could really happen. You know what I mean? And then Toy Story came out. I was a little bit older, and then that felt like it could really happen. I was convinced that my toys were alive. Um, you know. Early in my life, they were all murderers because of Chucky. Then later in my life, it was cool, like small soldiers. And then it was Toy Story where I think Toy Story might have turned me into a hoarder because I didn't, you know, why would you throw away your toys? It was so sad that Andy was growing up. It just didn't make any sense. You know what I mean? Uh, I agree. God Tank 2-6 is awesome. Um, boarded comics in and then they connect to each other. Okay, so I got to look. I got to look those up. Um, but there's another problem, too. Um there's another problem too with um, there's another problem too with is the thing I'm buying too expensive? You know, like I would like to. I, I'm almost gonna just buy a you know so, like a PVC or something, something that will hold the comic up because I want to be able to like put up ten or something. You know, ten Tyler Kirkham. You know what I mean? Ten. Um, you know, ten issues of what I'll show in a minute, the Spirit or something like that. So. I got to think about it. I asked my wife cause she like sort of redesigned the house and I'm really just a, I'm really just a pack rat. Like without my wife, I would probably live in a studio apartment and just have stacks of books and comics everywhere. Um, you know what I mean? And I mean, maybe not, who knows? Cause then again, I probably, I wouldn't be just like, I don't know. I, my wife sets me on a good path. I just can't tell her that cause then she keeps reminding me. <laughs> um, so, Scared the shit. Oh, Chucky. Chucky scared the shit out of me. Yeah. Yeah. I, Superior Hero Reviews is um, probably around my age or a little bit younger. So it's definitely the. Uh, I started my collection. You are a Dark Hawk number one guy. That's nice. Um, so one of the other things I wanted to talk about was. Uh, so I, I only found this out recently, but apparently it's been a, a couple weeks. And I, I guess I, I saw, you know, Gmart will tell me when something is canceled. And I saw my Predator stuff was canceled uh, or, or the covers were canceled. Normally, I just look at it and go, whatever. They give me a credit or, or it's just later or gets resolicited or whatever. But it turns out that the um, the Thompson brothers, I think is their name. This is uh, from a Hollywood Reporter article. I'll put it in the, in the description later. Turns out they have a claim or they say they have a claim on getting the rights back to Predator and it's not Disney's anymore. So... That's put a real freeze on everything. And I don't know if they're just like fucking around, you know, it's, it's, you have to be, have a pretty solid case to go up against Disney. Um, and, and I wonder if we'll get like, you know, one of those things where it becomes shared or, you know, Disney gets a really good licensing situation. Like it gets, it gets fixed, um, like in a mediation or something like that. But, uh, but I, I really don't know how I feel about it. Like, there's part of me that just goes, okay, Disney shouldn't be doing Predator, right? Like Predator needs to be pretty crazy and violent. But Disney has this history of owning like Touchstone and all that kind of stuff where, you know, they've been able to put out movies that that don't fit the branding that we think of immediately as Disney, you know? Um, and, and definitely like Alien looked a little bit uh, reserved, the comic did. And, you know, Predator, if anything, is... I guess more violent or it could be more violent alien is going to just look like an animal killing you predator is like a guy hunting you right um so i don't know how i feel about that i i, I want predator comics again and I, and I want them to be cool but um you know the marvel's gotten a lot of stuff from you know dark horse especially since he, disney's been buying everything that is cool um you know since disney moved away from just being disney princesses and bought all my entire childhood so I, I don't know exactly how I feel a bit. There's another part of me that wants like creators to have their stuff back uh, and a political side of me that we won't get into that really thinks like copyright is really stupid, like really bad that um, you, you, you should get a certain amount of time uh, to make money off the idea. Um, and I'm saying copyright, not even to this Thompson brothers, like creator own, that's great. But there's a certain point that should not be a hundred years that, the IP should just become um, like, you know, the world's essentially. So more or less what we're in, you know, what we're in for a lot of, uh, 
um, you know, a lot of like Americana songs and stuff like that. So the, the famous example is that, um, is that Mickey Mouse should be like America should be in the, in the public domain, but you know, Disney over and over keeps, you know, they put a lot of lobbying money behind it and keep proving that they continue to use, uh, Mickey Mouse every day in all their parks and everything like that. But I think there should be a fine line and it should be shorter. It should be at maybe around the time that a, uh, you know, a medicine can be patented and then you could start getting all these generics out. Right. So, um, you know, I, I have a lot of weights on there at the end of the day. I want the thing that I think is cool. Um, and, and I want it to come out and I don't want people to be hurt by it necessarily. Um, but you know, you all have these, and there are people being hurt by, you know, in, in the Congo right now, um, to put that out. So, uh, there's not a lot of, there's not a lot to say about it, except that part of me just is rooting for the, you know, these brothers that wrote this screenplay in like 1985 and it became one of my favorite movies ever. Um, and I was excited to get a comic series that I didn't feel lost in like dark horse, you know, Dark Horse has been doing these since the early 90s and you just feel lost. You'd have to grab something. You don't know what piece of the continuity it is and stuff like that. So it was like a nice way to like start from the beginning. But all those plans are now just way down the line. And I'm sure that uh, Marvel was eventually going to uh, eventually going to uh, do an Aliens versus Predator. You know, hopefully they can do that better than than has been done in the past. Um, but who knows? Anyway, that was one of the pieces of news that that grabbed me a little bit. Um, and then Bleeding Cool made a good point if we want to like focus on comics a little bit. the uh, So the Predator variants were also paused, right? And they go, there's no word on like how that will change like the ratios for comic stores because these uh, these comic stores would, you know, if you want the one in 25 of something or, or, or your volume or for your volume discounts, you would think that those predator covers would be like a, a not insignificant piece, uh, um, you know, of that order. So whether it's the ratio variance or the overall volume discounts, this might, might even be something This is better for something like Robbie to talk about, especially since he has a, a little bit bigger store. Um, but if they just cancel a big chunk, right? Like if they just like cut it out, like how does that affect the store? But um, that's a little bit smaller. So, hey, Paulo's here. Paulo, another uh, another one of the uh, very knowledgeable and uh, entertaining people in the community. I see him in uh, a lot of the chats I go to, things like Comic Crack and um, Damien's channel, Sleepy Reader Six Six Six. So, um, I'm I'm counting on Disney to stop the heat death of the universe to keep Mickey out of the public domain. Yes, this is true. It's six billion years away, and the only thing that is sure is that Disney will own Mickey Mouse, without a doubt. Um, I'm with you too, Chamorro. I don't know what for, but I'm with you. Um, the trademark more than the copyright. ERB Inc. maintains the active trademark on Tarzan and John Carter in spite of the early stories being in the public domain. So what Paulo is also talking about also relates to the way over here in the U.S. a Blaze is able to release the, uh, the Sumerian, which are Conan stories, um, even though there's a, you know, a group that licenses the, the rights out to Conan. So, um, it does start getting super confusing and I wasn't going to come in here to be a lawyer. Um, Paulo though smart. He may actually be a lawyer. I, I wouldn't be surprised if that was his actual job. Uh, there's fable, another station identification. Well, well he said hi to Chamorro before he did any stations here. Um, and then I'm going to just end, um, you know, Damien, uh, I think Damien influences me a little more than I influence him, uh, at sleepy reader six, six, six. Um, but you know, occasionally I see he goes chaos did something. So Damien has been talking a lot about the spirit and then I go, you know what? That's a big hole in my, uh, in my collection. So I should go buy and check out what's going on. I, not in my collection. I, you know, I will resell these in my reading. I don't have a ton of Eisner red. Um, so I, I should go check out what's going on. And, and he actually has a great video, um, where he's able to, where he explains like when the reprints were and what the old stuff was and kitchen sink reprints and stuff like that even tells you where a good place to start is. Um, I'm sure like Gore and Terrence and Paulo, um, you know, they're much more read with Eisner than I am. And so what I did was I went to the, 
you know, I went to the old eBay and I go, well, I'll put a few bids in. Uh, and they were all reasonable priced. And it, it was like the kind of thing where you, you know, you don't wait to the end because someone's going to snipe you and you want to make sure that the price is right. And this was more like, oh, that's a reasonable price. I'll put in a bid so I get the reminder. And, uh, you know, and if I have time, I can go take a look at it. These are the kitchen sink ones. Um, and then I ended up winning a lot of spirit. Like I won the kitchen sink ones. I won, uh, uh, I won a couple that I don't have here. I just could, I already filed them away. Um, so I got a lot of spirit to read and I think some of it is doubles essentially. So, uh, I'm showing kitchen sink right now. Oh, it looks like I'm only going to show kitchen. Oh, so these are all the kitchen sink ones. So I, I ended up winning a lot more than, than these kitchen sink ones. Um, there was a, like a quarterly spirit. I think that two or three issues came out. So I won those two and, and then I won a, 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 a older copy of, of one. Uh, I'm glad to say that I already put these in new bags and boards, so I'm not going to take them out. So, um, Eisner Spirit won't disappoint you. Um, the Warren magazines are great. Yeah, see, I don't have the Warren magazines. I didn't see any of those. I also, um, what was I going to say? I also got Dropsy Avenue, which I, which I, I think I've, I've read in the past, um, but maybe not when I was as steeped in you know, something I checked out from the library, like probably ten years ago. So I bought Dropsy Avenue to reread it, um, and I think that my head will be better for it now. Um, I'm an automotive journalist. Oh, there we go. A sport. Well, we need to talk about sports. But you're probably a. Um, you probably don't love Messi as much as my family does. So, um, let's see. Second Street Marvel. A Blaze is a Sumerian, and it's great. Eh, I, the ones I've read have been okay. What Conan should be, check it out. He's a man doing many things. He saves people and like women. Yeah, I, I don't think the Marvel Conans were as bad as uh, some of you guys said, to be honest. And um, I've reread some of the, you know, the Dark Horse stories, and they're not as exactly wild and violent and sexual as you guys say either. I think they're a lot closer than um, our little brains imagine. And the Sumerians are all right. Some of the art is too cartoony for me. You know, I need Conan... I don't, I need Conan to, you know, look like Ron Garney when, is drawing him or look like, you know, I, I mentioned, uh, Guillaume March. That would be a great Conan. You know, I don't like that cartoony style. So the art is very important to me in Conan. Um, you won the kitchen sink editions. I did. So I won a lot of them, Gore. I won a whole bunch of them. I thought I, I thought I grabbed everything I won, but I think I, I can't remember the one that was quarterly from um, either the early 80s or early 90s that uh, collected a bunch of the spirits. So um, I got a lot of spirit to read. And I heard the kitchen sink ones if you get enough of them. So I have a nice little run here that they're actually um, uh, actually very a very pleasant way to uh, dip into the spirit. So, But for the most part, I don't know what the hell I'm, I'm reading. Um, and then also I wanted to make sure – because uh, David McKean, I don't have the book ready right now, uh, or that he's coming out with. It's called like Dog or something like that. So David McKean, who's mostly famous for those Sandman covers, um, also did uh, Black Orchid, which I've talked about on this show before. Um, he's uh, one of my one of my favorites. Uh, I just really find his uh, his art to be interesting, especially when he does interiors. And so I wanted to make sure that I got um, a little bit more of his work. So I'll have a, a big chunk of it read before uh, before he can come over here. Come on, come say hi. Um, before the new one came out, because uh, Black Orchid is awesome too. My son wants to say hi. He's dressed like Iron Man. We're almost ending, Zachary. So I'm almost going to end, but you can say hi to everybody. That's Iron Man right now, right there. He didn't die. And then I also got... Um, Violent Cases. So this is some of Dave McKean's first work and early Neil Gaiman work. I've not read. Um, so I don't, I don't know how that I never bought this or owned it or read it. Um, but as I was looking for David McKean work, I realized, Oh, he has that book with Neil Gaiman. I should probably own that. Um, and, uh, and so black orchid is probably the other one that's uh, easily found. Thank you for saying hi. And, uh, is probably the other one that's easily found. And uh, he's, he's just a really good, um, uh, what am I trying to say where you cross styles? But, uh, you know, his art is very, uh, 
you know, very non-standard for comics. And that's mostly what, that's mostly what I'm looking for. That's what like keeps me interested is uh, things like that. And uh, his book coming out, good morning, Mr. Perry is here. Sleepy reader. Thank you for coming by. I'm about to end here. And uh, a bunch of station identifications. And Dave McKean is someone I always have a hard time reading. So that's what I was going to get into, um, you know, before I close up is I think this is true, what you're saying. It does have a hard, it is a little bit, like it's tougher to read and I feel it. Um, uh, but I also feel like satisfied when I take the time or, or take a look at it or just look at the art kind of thing. Uh, and, and I feel that a lot, like when Alex Ross does interiors. So a little bit less when it's like a painterly style or, um, or you know, watercolors or something, but I do definitely get it. Like it's almost like, you know, and Dave McKean is is sort of this feeling, you know, at a different level where it, it's almost not built for sequential art, right? Um, but then I, I find that if I really do the work and I do the work in the sense that I read it slow and I take my time with it um, and I think about it and even make myself willing willing to reread, then it is uh, it's something that I, I enjoy at the end of the day, right? But then it's also not something that I read in my car at lunch really quick or something. So um just the fact that he's different enough makes me enjoy it but uh i did want to mention i feel the same way as paulo costa i just have also realized that i do enjoy it when i give it the time kind of thing um so it's definitely not like reading daredevil in my car really quick or something like that um many years ago i i think it was espn or another sports channel that didn't show films uh, showed a french film a man and a woman it was during nascar season two to eat on espn that had to be a mistake right um yeah so sleepy if you just showed up i showed the spirit books you um inspired me to buy i showed only some of them actually so biggie's here too look at this um you did i'm about to jump over to chaotic sports with my buddy afshin and we're going to talk about jake paul and uh we're going to talk about real fighting but we're also going to talk about jake paul and uh you know and ben Askren really embarrassing the mma world and I'm actually going to do that now because it's 9.06 and my buddy Ashin is probably texting me. And I said what I had to say. So i uh, let you guys know what I'm going to do this week and what I've already put out. Um, showed you some books, showed you spirit books. And I did want to talk a little bit more about Dave McKean. I also want to gather, this might be for the future, but I, for whatever reason, I've never actually read except for, did I read a, the exception like Neil Gaiman? I always grab the prose books that comic writers write, and I've never actually read them, but I own a lot of them. I own like Charles Soule books. So this is Scott Snyder's like first book right there. So I was gonna talk about that a little bit too, but I think maybe that's a, a fool thing. Anyway, guys, thank you guys for coming in. Thank you guys for hanging out. 18 people in the chat, that's a um, that's big for me. I enjoy, this is what I'm here for, is literally just to talk to you. Um, I guess I'm framing the conversation, but for the most part, I think of it as a, a, a conversation with my friends that uh, read comic books and are also, uh, you know, also have, you know, their own, their own influences from outside from, you know, the kind of people that we are in our reading or day to day life, um, and sort of like bring it and tie it around comic books. So, uh, I really enjoyed this. Uh, I'm, I hope I'm able to do this on Sundays and, uh, have, uh, good conversations with you guys. And thank you for coming at chaotic, at chaotic, at chaos and comics on Instagram and Twitter. And now I'm going to go over to chaotic sports still on YouTube and uh, talk about fighting, um, you know, not comic book fighting, real fighting. So that may not be your bag, but uh, that's what I'm gonna do. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys later.